Thanks for joining us. Joining us tonight is Deputy Chief Troy Morton with the Penobscot County Sheriff's Department, Chief Ron Gastia with the Bangor Police Department, and Dr. Anthony Ng, Medical Director of Psychiatric Services at Acadia Hospital. Thank you three for being here. A very important topic, bath salts. We're hearing about it all over the news. I know you three are hearing about it a lot. We need to clear up. A lot of people still think this is something that you can go to a store and it's the salts that you pour in your tub to relax. But Chief Garcia, that's not the case. That is not the case. The, these are not the, the typical bath salts you hear uh, where you can go to, go to the store and that you use for beauty aids and so forth. These are synthetic drugs that are out there. They've been manufactured for the purpose of using them as uh, synthetic drugs and they are dangerous. They are, uh, and, and they're spreading quite rapidly in this area. Doctor, what is it, what is this made up of? What is in this drug that's? It's a synthetic drug, it's a designer drug. And um, there's three different kind of ingredients that one may have seen in bath salts. So bath salts is a pretty generic term. Mm -hmm. uh, one is called mephedrone, one is called MDPV, which is a short acronym for a longer name. And then methylone is the other one. Predominantly what we've been seeing in Northern Maine, Bangor area is the MDPV version. So, um, and again, this stuff is you know exported from some other country in know sent here and, and people just buying it from the deal, you know, dealers directly so it's um, it's an artificial man-made drug when you see when you encounter people on this chief deputy what are they what is their actions like do you know immediately that this is something they're on I, I think when we first started talking to our officers and and, and they hadn't experienced at the time uh, one of the easiest things uh, to tell them was you'll clearly know okay. um, it's usually very bizarre unusual behavior uh, usually comes with paranoia and also some aggression. Uh, we're seeing a little bit of range of everything so far in this area. And they're sold under names like Vanilla Sky, Monkey Dust, but especially things like Vanilla Sky, they sound harmless. Is that causing kind of a disconnect with people too? Maybe they don't think it's as serious? I think the entire, all, all of the names are, are causing a disconnect, including the general name bath salts. Uh, it, it causes confusion with people in knowing what they are. Uh, it sounds like they're pretty simple names, like they're, uh, like it would be relatively harmless. That is not the case. Uh, it's also not the case that these are, uh, that people who use these, the only people that they affect are the user. Um, they're affecting everybody. They're affecting people on the street. They're affecting the families. They're affecting law enforcement, the medical uh, uh, professionals uh, so it, it it runs the gamut here uh, and and people need to understand what these drugs do uh, what harm they can cause and and how to protect themselves and people are comparing these to PCP LSD are those fair comparisons do you all think I think you know I kind of mentioned this in the past it's like where I came from before was Washington DC and I was dealing with PCP patients on a regular basis and my first encounter with the, someone was on bath salt I thought am I seeing PCP up in Maine and then later on, when I heard about bat, you know, the bat salt monkey does, and we did a little bit more research into it, it's, it's not PCP, but the effects is, you know, almost a combination of any of those things, PCP, LSD, and ecstasy, which is why it's so scary. So. Today I had the opportunity to interview somebody in our jail that was uh, a, a admitted user of bath salts mm -hmm. and a, a longtime user of cocaine. And they were off, off their drugs for a year and a half and thought that bath salts may be less dangerous and decided to try it and the one time and he admittedly told me that this was as dangerous if not worse than his experiences on cocaine and some of the very similar uh, outcomes that he had. Have we seen a drug of this magnitude come onto the streets? I feel like this is re in recent and past years we haven't seen anything this that has such an impact. We haven't seen anything, certainly up in this area, that has had the impact that this has. Uh, this literally snuck up on us. Uh, this drug from uh, right after the first of the year uh, came up very quickly on us and it has essentially exploded. And the effects of it are, are so unpredictable. We haven't seen these type of effects in these numbers of any drug that I can recall uh, in my career. I think the interesting thing is, you know, designer drugs have been around for a while, different types, and but people always off, you know, often associate them with club scenes in like big cities like New York, Los Angeles, or whatever it is. And I think this is the first time a designer drug, I think, really started affecting a lot of rural areas. And, um, and that's why it's kind of so scary because none of these communities have dealt with this, uh, this before. 
when you're talking, you said you, you spoke to someone who's an admitted user. Are they embarrassed to say, I tried this? I, I've heard some people have said, you know, people don't want to even admit that they've used this. Uh, you know, I haven't found that. I, you know, having the opportunity to go into the jail and talk to some of the people that are there have been very open. Uh, I think they admittedly know that it's dangerous. And uh, the, the young man that I spoke to today was is concerned. Mm -hmm. He's concerned about other people trying it. Um, an admitted addict to say that to you would show you that th this is pretty potent stuff. If it makes them worried and they've lived this for some time, that should be concerning for somebody trying it. Absolutely. We spoke with someone who has admitted to doing bath salts. He says that he had wouldn't mind tell, sharing his story with us. He sat down with us, he was very frank with us. He said he was doing it on a daily basis. And we wanna share you his story. His name's Jesse, and we need to hear from him. Jesse was addicted to opiates for 10 years. In late April, he hit a low point in his life and went in search of a new way to get high. So I was looking for an escape and looking for drugs and bath salts were quite prevalent at the time. The, you'd find them anywhere. He found them and started using them. It is so widely available. I mean, you can walk a block in any direction when you're in town Bangor and buy the stuff. Then the next thing you know, I was doing it constantly. I would find some and uh, I was using them intravenously. So I would do an injection and then just be a crazy person for the next well, two, three hours. Uh, I remember one day <laughs> taking a shot and then literally spending the next three hours on my hands and knees searching for four leaf clovers, <laughs> like just out of my mind. I definitely had a lot of paranoid fear and a lot of the disconnection with like reality, you know? There was nothing anyone could have said to me to stop me. The drugs took control of his life, so much so he wouldn't even sleep. Sleep is not exactly a priority or even possible when you're on a stimulant like that. So uh, at one point there was a 12 day stretch where I didn't sleep at all. Like no eating, no sleeping, none of the other priorities of normal life, just getting it, doing it, getting more and doing it. Obviously taking a toll on his physical and mental health. I generally weigh about 140 pounds and I was down to 105. Um, and my, all the bones in my face were showing and obviously hygiene had gone right out the window because I really didn't have any place to stay or, you know, shower or anything. So I was looking pretty bad, yeah, walking around in dirty, torn up clothes and physically emaciated, just sickly and, yeah. It's very comparable to like coke or meth. Um, at, at least as powerful, um, but quite a bit more destructive. The, the destruction in that three weeks was horrific. So horrific, his family wouldn't talk to him. I was such a mess that my own brothers wouldn't even answer their doors when I knocked. I mean, like people just didn't want me around unless they were looking for drugs. He calls it a three week bath salts bender. One night as he was coming off of a high, he fell asleep standing up next to a school. Well, the next thing I knew, I was waking up uh, with a police officer standing right in front of me. And um, I had paraphernalia and stuff on me and ended up getting charged with possession. That was May 29th. The arrest changed his life. Now, looking back on it with a clear head, uh, I would be dead if I hadn't been arrested that day because I had no intention of stopping at that point. I mean, I knew I wanted to, but I, it was not a possibility for me unless I was forcibly stopped. Jesse will admit he's done a good amount of drugs over the last 10 years and says none destroyed him like bath salts. You can take all all the steady decline throughout all those years from doing drugs. And I mean, you can roll it all into one three week bender on monkey dust and that literally had the same amount of destruction in that short period of time. When he got out of jail, he knew he never wanted to touch drugs again. He turned to a rehab program at Mana Ministries in Bangor for help. 
You live there, uh, eat there, everything, and you go to Narcotics Anonymous meetings, and uh, there's some counseling involved. He also has three little reasons to stay clean. Three-year-old twin boys and a 10-month-old daughter. I love my children, and man, I want to give them better than what I was giving them. If maybe it can help keep them away from it, then yeah, I would like them to be aware of exactly how badly I was affected by drugs. Drug-free for more than 100 days now, he wants people to understand how dangerous these designer drugs are. Everyone has the kind of Hollywood idea of like the crackhead <laughs> who gets paranoid and barricades the doors and is peeking out the windows and everything else. And like, it's that times 10. The moment you ingest it, you're already that paranoid. It's killing people. Like, not only are they dying from using the drug themselves, but they're using the drug and becoming so psychotic that they're killing people. Despite the weeks of use, Jesse says it was never a fun experience. No, I was never really enjoying myself. No, I was never really having a good time. I was always paranoid and freaking out and this and that. Even though the actual high isn't that enjoyable, that rush of chemicals, the natural chemicals of your body, is something that you crave after you have it. And that's what keeps bringing people back, is more of the, the chemical reaction in your body than the actual high. He regrets ever injecting the drug in the first place. I like using my brain. <laughs> and I almost lost the ability to use my brain and, and I only used it for three weeks like I don't see anyone lasting three months on this stuff and not either dying or having to get off of it and says even uh, though he's been off the drug he still no sees differences in his body the texture of my hair even or the oil of my skin uh, it feels like my body chemistry is really different i hope it's a temporary thing and that it's going to equalize again but um physically i i, I feel changes uh, in my in the chemical balance of my body and, uh, he hopes sharing his story will help others stay away from or get off of bath salts if they want to stay alive if they want to have their mental ability if they don't want this to be the end of their life, then they need to not do it. Uh, you're just, your body can't take it, your brain can't take it. Uh, of, of all drugs, I've never seen anything so destructive. Uh, I just cannot believe how badly it destroyed me in such a short period of time. We are thankful Jesse agreed to share his story with us and hope it sheds some light on how destructive these drugs are. And let's now turn to our experts. Jesse told us his story. He says when he was arrested that night on May 29th, he actually thanked the police officer that arrested him. He said, thank you, you're saving my life. Is that rare though, that interaction with police? I know that this can be dangerous for officers who are going to interact with these people. It is, uh, it can be very, very dangerous for the officers because of the, the delusions, the paranoia, the hallucinations, the psychosis all of those things and the officer doesn't know what he's going to he doesn't know what he's getting into when he gets there that's why we send two officers on every call at a minimum uh, in with this particular situation um, with Jesse it's not uncommon uh, when we're, we're finding uh, uh, multiple times that the people we come into contact with are seeking uh, help uh, they will tell us that they're on bath salts they will uh, ask us to, to take them to the hospital so it's not rare. Uh, I, it, it, has, it appears that these people are seeking ways to get off the bath salts, but it is an addictive drug. And, and we're hearing that from family members who want us to help their, their, their loved ones who are addicted or on bath salts. We're hearing it from the people themselves. Uh, so uh, it, it kind of speaks for itself that, that, that this drug is a little different than anything else we've ever come into contact with.